Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is actually my fifth episode recording at once because there are only five more episodes of the letter B after this one. Uh, so I just I said, hey, let's just split it up into two. I'll do five today and I'll do five tomorrow. Um, please, uh, you know, rate and review if you have Apple, if you are able to connect to Apple Podcasts in any way. Uh, please uh, review this. I would love a five-star review. It helps to get more exposure. I'd love to get in those charts, if for no other reason than just to say I'm in the charts. And uh, please share this with everybody you know. Um, and uh, if you want to throw bucks my way, oh, I just lowered the uh, the lowest level on Patreon to one dollar a month, so it's a little bit easier. And uh, you know, just just listen and subscribe and have fun. This is all about fun. The first, we're at the top of page 169. The first word is Butinsky, B-U-T-T-I-N-S-K-Y or S-K-I. And I think it's interesting that at the top of the page where it says what the very first word is, the top right corner, it has the version that's S-K-I, even though the first one that's mentioned is S-K-Y. This is a noun from 1902, a person given to butting in. Also, a troublesome meddler. Interesting. So, literally, uh, it's in the name, but in. They have but in, uh, plus the suffix S-K-Y or S-K-I, which is the last element in Slavic surnames. Uh, Yeah, it's a Batinsky. I don't, I don't, I never, I think that's so funny. I'm going to have to call people Batinskys now. Um, Next is but joint, two words, noun from 1823. A joint made by fastening the parts together end to end without overlap and often with reinforcement. Next is buttock. Noun from the 14th century. One, the back of a hip that forms one of the fleshy parts on which a person sits. Uh, I'm sure there are lots of different ways that they could have worded that. They, I wonder if there are other versions that they decided against. Uh, the back of a hip that forms one of the fleshy parts it's it's a butt. It's your butt. It's it's your bum. Uh, it's the gluteus maximus. I remember. I think I was probably in like sixth grade when I learned gluteus maximus, which I think is the the actual name of the muscles that make the butt. Uh, and then number two is plural, so we have two uh, a the seat of the body, the buttocks, and then two b the one a definition for the word rump. All right. Next is button. How do you say this word? Do you say button? Do you say button? Where you don't emphasize the T so much? Do you say something else? I think it's funny how people say these words differently. Other, another one is mitten or mitten. I think there was another. M- mutton, I guess, is similar to mitten, mutton. Anyway, this is the first form. It is a noun from the 14th century. 1A, a small knob or disc secured to an article as of clothing, and used as a fastener by passing it through a buttonhole or loop. 1B, a usual, usually circular metal or plastic badge bearing a stamped design or printed slogan, as in campaign button. Uh, when I was a kid, for some reason, my mom had a button maker. I have no idea how that happened, but um, but yeah, we, we made buttons. Uh, we, we, she worked at a camp that I was a I was a camper at and we made buttons for the camp we made buttons for fun I don't remember why exactly because I was pretty young but yeah it was this you put the image in then you put the pieces in and then you pull the lever and the thing it makes it a button uh yeah uh, they they put me to work too so I I was making buttons when I was probably like seven or eight years old uh is that child labor I don't think so because I didn't get paid hmm there might be laws against that all right, number two, something that resembles a button as 2A, any of various parts or growths of a plant or of an animal. As, now we have a, a sub as, uh, 2A1, synonym is bud, B-U-D. 2A2, an immature whole mushroom, especially button mushroom or button mushroom. Uh, and then 2A3, the terminal segment of a rattlesnake's rattle. That's a button? Huh. Okay. Uh, Now we have 2B, a small globule of metal remaining after fusion, as in 
assaying, A-S-S-A-Y-I-N-G. To see, a guard on the tip of a fencing foil. 3A, synonym is push button. 3B, something as a push button that has the real or symbolic capability of initiating a catastrophe as a nuclear attack. As in, has his finger on the button. Uh, yeah, that is the presidents or leaders of countries, uh, you know, they have that ability, metaphorically speaking, and uh, I'm very, well, I'm, I'm just, I don't want to jinx anything. Okay, 3C, a hidden sensitivity that can be manipulated to produce a desired response, as in, knows how to push my buttons. Oh, that guy, that girl, whoever it is, doesn't matter, they really know how to push my buttons. 3D, a usually box-shaped computer icon that initiates a specific software function. Number four, the point of the chin, especially as a target for a knockout blow. Buttonless is an adjective. The phrase, on the button, synonym means exactly, as in, arrived at noon on the button. I like to say on the nose. And then it says also, exactly on target, on the nose. There you go. As in, the estimate was right on the button. Uh, what button are they talking about? There's so many kinds of buttons. This is from Anglo-French boutun, which means rose hip, or stud, from buter, which means to thrust, and there's more at the word but. Next, we have the second form of button verb from the 14th century. Transitive is first. One, to furnish or decorate with buttons. 2A, to pass a button through a buttonhole or loop. 2B, to close or fasten with buttons, and that is often used with the word up, as in, button up your overcoat. It's cold out there. You want to get sick? No, you don't. So button up your overcoat. 3A, to close the lips, to prevent speech, as in, button your lip. 3B, to close or seal tightly, usually used with the word up again. As in, button up the house for winter. It's like a very big overcoat. And that was transitive. Now we have intransitive. To have buttons for fasten fastening. As in, this dress buttons at the back. Well, that is very impractical because you need somebody to help you button up the dress. Same with zippers. How how do you how are you going to do that? You need some... What, what about single people? What about people who are alone? If they want to wear this dress, that buttons or zippers in the back, how are they going to do it? I get clever, I guess. Or just don't buy it. Next is buttoner. Uh, no, that's uh, that's the noun form. Next is button ball. Button ball, okay? Noun from 1821. And we just have the synonym plain, P-L-A-N-E. It's the second form. Plain, button ball. Okay, that's interesting. We'll find out later. Next is button bush. One word, noun from 1754. A North American shrub of the matter family, M-A-D-D-E-R, with globular flower heads. And the scientific name is Cephalanthus occidentalis. Next is button down. Two words with a hyphen. This is the first form adjective from 1934. 1A, of a collar. It's talking about a collar, like the collar of a shirt probably. Having the ends fastened to the garment with buttons. 1B is talking about a garment in general having a button-down collar. Number two is uh, could also be buttoned down. Uh, con- conser- conser- conservatively, sorry, it went over to the second line. Conservatively traditional or conventional, especially adhering to conventional norms in dress and behavior, as in button-down businessmen. I don't like to be buttoned down. That's just me. Uh, next, we have the second form of button-down, noun from 1952, a shirt with a button-down collar. Next is buttoned up, two words with a hyphen, adjective from 1936, coldly reserved or standoffish, as in a buttoned-up executive. Next is buttonhole, first form, one word. Uh, oh, this is the last word of the episode. There's three forms. Noun from 1561, one a slit or loop through which a button is passed. Number two is chiefly British, and they we have the synonym boutonniere. Uh, that is the thing 
that you put uh, the flowers and you put it in the buttonhole usually. There must we I'm pretty sure boutonniere comes from the word button. I don't remember, but it looks like it does. Second form of buttonhole transitive verb from 1828, 1 to furnish with buttonholes, 2 to work with buttonhole stitch. Buttonholer is a noun, the one who makes buttonholes. And then lastly, we have the third form of buttonhole. This is a transitive verb from 1857. To detain in conversation by or as if by holding on to the outer garments of buttonhole. Uh, it's an alternative of buttonhold with a D at the end. Buttonhold. So we had buttinski, butt joint, buttock, button, button ball, button bush, button down, buttoned up, buttonhole, and buttonhole. Um, hmm. Well, I think I'm just going to pick Butinsky as the word of the episode because it's just the name of somebody that you call somebody who is butting in all the time. Uh, That's all I got today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing all of this information in this book to you. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, So I just had a very weird brain fart. Um, I ended up recording the last section of this page But we're actually on the second section of this page. Uh, I I just, I looked at it wrong and I just got confused. So uh, when you hear that in a couple of days, you can think he was dumb and he recorded it ahead of time. And that you would not have ever known that, but I just told you because that's fun. I want you to know what is going on over here in my brain. So uh, second section of page 169, first word is buttonhole stitch. Two words. Noun from 1877, a closely worked loop stitch used to make a firm edge, as on a buttonhole. Next is button hook, one word, noun from 1870. One, a hook for drawing small buttons through buttonholes. Two, an offensive play in football in which the pass receiver runs straight downfield and then abruptly cuts back toward the line of scrimmage. Uh, And the line of scrimmage is where they started from. And then button hook is also an intransitive verb. Next is button man. Two words. It's the man made out of buttons. Noun from 1966. A low-ranking member of a criminal underworld organization. You, you, you got to start somewhere, right? You work your way up. Um, and then this is just from, uh, or perhaps from buttons, which is also a bellhop. Next, we have button mushroom, two words, noun from 1865, a usually small white mushroom in which the peleus has not yet expanded. What is the peleus? Uh, The scientific names are Agaricus bisporus and also Agaricus brunescens, brunescens. Next, we have button quail, two words, noun from 1885. Any of a family of small terrestrial old world birds that resemble quails and have only three toes on a foot with the hind toe being absent. Well, I guess they just don't need that hind toe for for reasons. And the family name is Turnicidae, T-U-R-N-I-C-I-D-A-E. Next, we have button snake root, two words, noun from 1775. One is the number 2A definition for the word blazing star. Two, any of several usually prickly herbs of the carrot family. And the genus name is eryngium. So it's a button snake root is a kind of carrot, maybe? They're in the family. I don't know if they actually grow carrots or something like that. Next, we have buttonwood, one word, noun from 1674, and we just have the number two, no, the second form of the word plane, the aeroplane as a synonym, Uh, so maybe they used to call them buttonwoods or something, or maybe they were made out of buttonwood, and then they changed, I don't know. Next is butt out, two words, butt out of my business. This is an intransitive verb from 1906, to cease interference or involvement as in, told him to butt out of my affairs. I already got plenty of people in my affairs. I don't need you in there, too. Next, we have buttress. 
B-U-T-T-R-E-S-S, first form, noun from the 14th century. One, a projecting structure of masonry or wood for supporting or giving stability to a wall or building. Number two, something that resembles a buttress as to A, a projecting part of a mountain or hill. To B, a horny protuberance on a horse's hoof at the heel or hoof, however you want to say that. Uh, And then it says to see the hoof illustration. To see the broadened base of a tree trunk or a thickened vertical part of it. Number three, something that supports or strengthens, as in a buttress of the cause of peace. Well, what would the buttress of the cause of peace be? It's the thing that is uh, strengthens it, stabilizes it, supports it. Uh, buttressed is an adjective. And uh, let's see, this is from uh, Middle English. Buttress from Anglo-French, boteras, which means thrusting, ultimately from buter, which means to thrust, and there's more at the word, but... Uh, there is a picture of the first definition of this buttress. Um, it's just, um, it sort of looks like the corner of a church, maybe, because there's a window that has like a pointed arch in it in the bottom. And, uh, you know, it's just the corner. So it's just a section of bricks that come out just to add stability to that corner. Um, and then, you know, the famous example of buttresses, specifically flying buttresses, are on the um, I think it's the, the Notre, Notre Dame in, um, in Paris. I'll post a picture of that. So it, it, they're, they're buttresses that are not, I, I guess the reason why they're called flying is that they're not on the walls and the corners like this example is. They're up um, like kind of by the roof area. They're way up high to give support to the whole structure. Uh, that is that. Now we have the second form of buttress. It is a transitive verb from the 14th century. To furnish or shore up with a buttress. Also, the synonyms support and strengthen, as in arguments buttressed by solid facts. Next, we have butt shaft. Um, Yep, two words, noun from 1588. A target arrow without a barb. No barb on that target arrow. Next, we have butt stock. One word, noun from circa 1909. The stock of a firearm in the rear of the breech mechanism. Next, we have butt weld. Is that when somebody welds your butt cheeks together? No, I don't think so. This is a noun from circa 1864. A butt joint, which we read uh, probably a couple episodes ago. Um, A butt joint made by welding. And then butt weld with a hyphen is a transitive verb. Next, we have butty or just buddy. B-U-T-T-Y, noun from 1855. It is British, and we have the synonym sandwich. So if any of you British people call your sandwiches buddy, let me know why and how and where this came from. Oh, it looks like it's from uh, the word butter. Uh, They just added a Y at the end, butter, buddy. Uh, So maybe it specifically is like a butter sandwich of some kind. I think that's so maybe if if I have a butter sandwich, I'm going to say I'm going to go eat a buddy. Okay, next we have batut, B-U-T-U-T. I think it's just, yeah, batut, noun from uh, 1972. Uh, It just says to see the word dalasi, uh, D-A-L-A-S-I, in the money table. So it's a kind of money. And it is a, a wolof word. W O L O F. I think I'm gonna look at the abbreviation page. Yep, it's just it's just Wolof. That's not short for anything, I don't think. And uh, it's their word butut, B U T U U T, which is literally something small. So that just must be what they call their money. Um, but where is Wolof? Where where's the Wolof language spoken? Uh, I don't know, but we should we shall find out. Next we have butyl. B-U-T-Y-L, noun from 1869, any of four isometric alkyl radicals, C4H9, and then there's a minus symbol, I don't know what that means, uh, which is derived from butane. Next is butyl alcohol, two words, noun from circa 1871, any of four flammable alcohols, C4H9OH9. 
as butanol, used in organic synthesis and as solvents. Uh, they are flammable, so keep the fire away from them, please and thank you. Next is butylated, adjective from 1942, combined with the butyl radical. That's So when something is butylated, it is combined with the butyl radical. And butylation is a noun. Uh, okay, now we have a couple of words that um, are very hard to read because of the dots that designate where the syllables are, but I think it is butylated hydroxyanisole. Hydroxyanisole. Yep, it is two words. Butylated hydroxyanisole. This is a noun from 1950, and we just have the synonym, which is an abbreviation, BHA. Uh, so we probably read that before. Uh, you can go go back to that, see what it is. But next we have a similar word. It is butylated hydroxytoluene. Hydroxytoluene. This is a noun from 1961, and we again have a an abbreviation as the synonym, which is BHT. Next, and our last word for this episode is butylene. B-U-T-Y-L-E-N-E, noun from 1877. Any of three isometric hydrocarbons, C4H8, of the ethylene series, obtained usually by cracking petroleum. So we had buttonhole stitch, button hook, button man, button mushroom, button quail, button snake root, button wood, butt out, buttress, butt shaft, butt stock, butt weld, buddy, batut, butyl, butyl alcohol, butylated, butylated hydroxyanisole, butylated hydroxytoluene, and butylene. Well, um, let's see. I think I'm going to pick, where did it go? I think I'm just going to pick butty as the word of the episode because I think that is a funny name for a sandwich. And uh, maybe if I remember, I'll start calling my sandwiches buddies. Um, Also, just buttress is a good one because it provides support for whatever it is, either it's a building or an argument or something, uh, has a wide range of definitions and is important. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Thank you very much for turning this podcast on. I hope uh, you are telling other people to go listen as well, because it is very, very educational, good for families, good for a sleeping aid. Here we go. First word, oh, I should mention that the first uh, like six or seven words are all very scientifically related, uh, you know, so have fun with that. Enjoy my pronunciations. First is butyl nitrite, B-U-T-Y-L. Second word, N-I-T-R-I-T-E, noun from 1977. An oily liquid ester, C4H9NO2, of butyl alcohol and nitrous acid that is inhaled illicitly, especially as an aphrodisiac. And then it says compare to the word popper. I think just colloquially, the nickname is uh, just poppers. Um, Yeah, yeah, I have no experience with this. I don't know what it is. Does it? There must be another name for it too. I don't know. I don't know if it's laughing gas or something else. But that's that. Next is butyl rubber. Two words, noun from 1940. Any of a class of synthetic rubbers that are made by copolymerizing isobutylene with a small amount usually of isoprene at low temperature. Uh, By the way, I feel like I very much should mention, uh, if you come across this butyl nitrate, please don't do it. I don't think that's probably a very smart thing to do. Okay, next we have a prefix, butyr or butyro, B-U-T-Y-R, or you can add an end. Uh, It just means butyric, as in the example butyraldehyde which is our next word uh butyl butyraldehyde uh this is a noun from circa 1885 either of two aldehydes c4h8o used especially in making synthetic resins uh i I guess I've sort of assumed this. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but uh, when you come across those letters and numbers, in this case it was C4H8O, uh, that means that that molecule has four carbon atoms, eight, I think it's hydrogen, yeah, eight hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom all combined, and it becomes this new thing. 
Um, so yeah, I may have mentioned that a long time ago. I don't remember. I'll probably mention it again in about a year when I've forgotten that I am saying it right now. Uh, but uh, okay, next we have butyrate, noun from 1873, a salt or ester of butyric acid. Next is butyric, adjective from 1854, relating to or producing butyric acid. This is actually from a, let's see, a French word, butyrique, which is from a Latin word, butyrum, which means butter. Not how, sure why butter and butyric acid are connected. Maybe there's something scientifically going on there. I don't know. Uh, next, we have butyric acid, noun from 1826, either of two isometric fatty acids, C4, H8, O2, uh, especially the straight chain acid of unpleasant odor normally found in perspiration and, ah, here we go, rancid butter. Uh, so it, yeah, it does come from butter, butyric acid. Uh, by the way, I want to point out that uh, this um, chemical compound is only one, one atom different than the other one we read, butylalde, butyraldehyde. Um, this uh, butyric acid had, has added an oxygen atom, C4H8O2. The other one only had one oxygen. Uh, so, you know, it's, once you add one atom, it just becomes a whole new thing. Uh, okay, next we have butyrophenone. Butyrophenone, noun from 1970. Any of a class of antipsychotic drugs as haloperidol, haloperidol, used especially in the treatment of schizophrenia. Uh, it still has the same prefix as these other ones, um, so I wonder if that just means that it is uh, uh, butyric. But yeah, so they, th this this chemical compound, you know, related to all these must be in this uh, this medicine to help people with schizophrenia. Uh, okay, next we are out of those scientific words, and we have buxom, B-U-X-O-M, adjective from uh, the 12th century. One is obsolete. Uh, so 1A, synonyms are obedient and tractable, tractable, okay? Uh, 1B, still obsolete, offering little resistance. Synonym is flexible, as in, Wing silently the buxom air. That is a quote from John Milton. Wing silently the buxom air, offering little resistance. The air is so not resistant. Okay, next we have number two, uh, which is archaic, and it means full of gaiety. Basically, just very happy. Number three is not obsolete, not archaic. It is vigorously or healthily plumb. Oh, plump. Sorry, I thought that was a B. Plump. Uh, specifically, full bosomed, and uh, yeah, that's the one that people mostly think of these days because obviously number one and number two are not used anymore. It's so interesting how the English language changes like this. Like it's just people used to say that, and now they just don't use the words that way. They use them in a different way. When did that happen? How did that happen? Uh, buxomly is an adverb, and buxomness is a noun. Um, wing silently the buxom air. I don't even remember if I said that correctly. I must have. Anyway, we are moving on to the word by, B-U-Y. First form, verb from before the 12th century. First is transitive. One, to acquire possession, ownership, or rights to the use or services of, by payment, especially of money. Could also be through a trade. I think we need more trading in our lives instead of money. Uh, and then the, the synonym is purchase. 2A, to obtain in exchange for something often at a sacrifice, as in, they bought peace with their freedom. Uh, now we have 2B, we have the number six definition for the word redeem. Number three, synonyms are bribe and hire. Number four, to be the purchasing equivalent of as in, the dollar buys less today than it used to. Five synonyms are accept and believe, as in, I don't buy that hooey. Nope, that hooey can't be bought by me. I don't believe it. I don't accept it because it's hooey. Uh, a lot of people are saying that phrase these days. 
Uh, this is often used with the word into. I don't buy into that way of thinking. Uh, okay, now we have uh, intransitive just says to make a purchase. Buyer is a noun. Buy into means to purchase a portion of or interest in, as in the TV network bought into its local football team. Next phrase is buy it or buy the farm, and that means to get killed. Synonym is die. You bought the farm. Still not really sure why that phrase happened, but it exists. Uh, and then our last phrase for buy is buy time, and that means to delay an imminent action or decision. Synonym is stall. I gotta buy time with all this money I have so I can stall until this other thing is gonna happen. But how can you buy time? That's not possible. All right, now we have the second form of buy. This is a noun from 1879. One, something of value at a favorable price, especially the synonym bargain, as in it's a real buy at that price. And number two, an act of buying. Synonym is purchase. Next is buy back. One word noun from 1963. The act or an instance of buying something back. I mean, it's right there in the name, especially the repurchase of a corporation of shares of its own common stock on the open market. Next is buyer's market. Two words noun from 1926. Uh, that is what we pretty much have right now. A market in which goods are plentiful, buyers have a wide range of choice, and prices tend to be low, and then compare to seller's market. Uh, so yeah, in terms of real estate, uh, right now, because of the pandemic and how the economy is going down and rates are low and prices are low, uh, it is a buyer's market. Uh, so now is a good time to, to buy a house if you can. But also, nobody really wants to do that right now. Uh, but then, of course, when the, the prices are high, it's good for the sellers. So that's a seller's market. Next, we have buy off. Two words. Transitive verb from 1629. One, to induce, to infrain. No, to induce, to refrain. As from prosecution. By a payment or other consideration. Number two, to free by payment. And an example of that is as from military service. Uh, so, you, yeah, you, you want to um, give give somebody money or something so you don't have to do something. And then our last word uh, is buy out one word. Fun fact, this is the one that I started to read at the beginning of the next episode, which I already recorded because I'm stupid. Uh, so buy out is, yeah, like I said, one word, noun from 1971. One, an act or instance of buying out. Two, a financial incentive offered to an employee in exchange for an early retirement or voluntary resignation. So we had butyl nitrate, butyl rubber, butyr or butyro, butyraldehyde, butyrate, butyric, butyric acid, butyrophenone, buxom, buy, buyback, buyer's market, buy off, and buy out. Uh, well, I have no idea what to pick here. Um, I'm just going to pick the word butyric, B-U-T-Y-R-I-C, because right under the word it says butter, and I like butter. That's all I got to say for this episode. Thank you very much. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is it. Uh, let's see, the end of page 169. Our first word is buy out, B-U-Y, second word O-U-T. This is a noun from 1971. One, an act or instance of buying out. Two, a financial, in no, wow, what did I do here? Um, I think I started to read the last word of the last episode. Uh, yep, I totally did that. So let's start this one over. Buy out, two words, verb from 1598. Uh, this is transitive. One, to purchase the share or interest of. Two, to purchase the entire stock in trade and the goodwill of. And an example is a business. Next is buy up. Two words. Transitive verb from circa 1534. One, to buy freely or extensively. Two, to buy the entire available supply of. Uh, yes, uh, I'm trying to think... If I've ever done that, 
Mm, no. Okay. Next word is buzz. B-U-Z-Z. First form. Verb from the 14th century. Starting with intransitive. One. To make a low, continuous humming sound like that of a bee. 2A. Synonyms are murmur and whisper. 2B. To be filled with a confused... Uh, and I got confused. Uh, to be... To be filled with a confused murmur, as in, the room buzzed with excitement. 3. To make a signal with a buzzer. 4. To go quickly, synonym is hurry, as in, buzzed around town in a sports car. Also, the synonym scram, and that is usually used with the word off, like buzz off. Number 5. To feel high, especially from a drug, like, I got a buzz, I'm buzzing from something. Uh, Next is the transitive definitions. One, to utter covertly by or as if by whispering. Two, to cause to buzz. Three, to fly fast and close to, as in planes buzz the crowd. That's not very safe. Four, to summon or signal with a buzzer. Also, to let in through an electronically controlled entrance. And that is used with the word in or through, as in buzzed him in. Number five is English dialect, and it means to drink to the last drop, as in, get some more port while I buzz this bottle. And that is a quote from W.M. Thackeray. I, I like this, this form, this example. I'm going to finish up this bottle, and you can go get some more. Butler, please go get me some more port. Okay, now we have the second form of buzz. This is a noun from circa 1600. One, a persistent vibratory sound. Uh, Maybe I should put a buzz in the background of this uh, episode. No, that would be irritating. Buzz. Number two, A, a confused murmur. Two, B, synonyms are rumor and gossip. Two, C, a flurry of activity. Two, D, synonyms are fad and craze. Two, E, speculative or excited talk or attention relating especially to a new or forthcoming product or event, as in, one of the few new shows that's getting good buzz. That is a quote from TV Guide. What show were they talking about? What year could that have possibly been? Uh, I'm very curious. Uh, And then also, an instance of such talk or attention, as in, their first CD created a huge buzz. I feel like CD should just be replaced with album because it can be lots of different forms of physical media. Number three, a signal conveyed by buzzer, specifically a telephone call. And then number four is the number four definition for the word high, which is uh, similar to, uh, let's see, the number five definition for the first form, which is to feel high, especially from a drug. And uh, next we have buzzard, B-U-Z-Z-A-R-D. Noun from the 14th century. Oh, by the way, I should say that uh, it is very, very windy here today. And uh, so you may hear the windows rattling a bit as the wind picks up. Uh, So number one for buzzard is chiefly British. And we have the synonym buteo, which, uh, let's see, can we find that real quick? Buteo, it is, um, it's a hawk. Yep. Okay, uh, now we have number two. Any of various usually large birds of prey as the turkey vulture. Number three, a contemptible or rapacious person. Next is buzz bomb, two words, noun from 1944, an unguided jet propelled missile used by the Germans against England in World War II. Next is buzz cut, noun from 1980. Fancy that, that's the year I was born. And I, for most of my life, had a buzz cut. Uh, Anyway, the synonym is just crew cut. And then buzz cut with a hyphen is an adjective. Uh, Yeah, I think probably starting in, hmm, let's see, maybe sixth grade, something like that, I started just getting a buzz cut. Just, you know, even short hair all over the place. And I think I had that until about... 2018? No, sorry. I had that until... uh, Oh, let me backtrack. I had that for a while, then I had long hair, then I went back to it. Who cares about this information? Anyway, I had it for most of my life. I'm kind of tempted to go back to it because it's just easy and I don't have to think about what to do with your hair 
And right now I have a bit of a fro going, uh, but it needs a cut. All right, next we have buzzer noun from 1606. One, one that buzzes. Specifically, an electric signaling device that makes a buzzing sound. Number two, the sound of a buzzer. Next is buzz kill. One word, noun from 1992. One that has a depressing or negative effect. Oh man, that was such a buzz kill, dude. Next is buzz saw. Two words, noun from 1847. Synonym is circular saw. Next is buzzword. One word is buzzword. Noun from 1946. One, an important sounding, usually technical word or phrase, often of little meaning, used chiefly to impress laymen. You know, so the people who don't quite understand the jargon that you're talking about, buzzwords sound super fancy. Uh, number two, a vogueish word or phrase. Phrase vogue, as in like, oh, it's such in vogue, and then it's it's vogueish, a vogueish word or phrase called also buzz phrase. Uh, next, we have um, there's going to be some abbreviations here, but this first one is BVD, all caps. This is a trademark, and it is used for underwear. So this is just a, a brand that makes underwear, BVDs. Um, I think there was some comedy song. I can't think of which one it is right now. It might have been Weird Al, might have been somebody else that mentions BVDs in there somewhere. I don't know. It's just, you know, it's just a trademark. Like Hoover for vacuum and Kleenex for nose tissues. Next, we have B, vitamin. Got to make sure that you got your B vitamins. I should probably take one today, actually. This is a noun from 1920. Any vitamin of the vitamin B complex. Next is BVM, all caps, abbreviation for Blessed Virgin Mary. I had no idea that she was so important that she got a whole abbreviation. Next, we have BVT. This is all lowercase. It is an abbreviation for Brevet, B-R-E-V-E-T. Next is BW, all caps, abbreviation for one, Bacteriological Warfare or Biological Warfare. Either one, totally cool. Number two, black and white, like when you're talking about photography. Next is Buana, B-W-A-N-A. This is a noun from 1875, and we have the synonyms master and boss. Uh, This is a Swahili word from the Arabic word abuna, which means our father. Uh, so that's uh, that's Buana. Next is BWI, all caps, abbreviation for British West Indies. Next is uh, kind of a silly abbreviation. Uh, it is BX, all lowercase, abbreviation for the word box. So we, we went from three letters to two letters. And finally, we have BX, again, all caps, abbreviation for base exchange. So we had buy out, buy up. Buzz, buzzard, buzz bomb, buzz cut, buzzer, buzz kill, buzz saw, buzzword, BVD, B vitamin, BVM, BVT, BW, Buana, BWI, BX, and BX. Well, I do want to say that it is very important to make sure that you get all your B vitamins either in your fu- food, your feud, or your your actual vitamins, which is how I get them mostly. Um, But I'm going to pick buzz cut as the word of the episode because uh, it's just a very important part of my life personally. Uh, If you, you know, if you wanted to pick a different one, let me know. You can send me an email. You can send me a message. You can call my Google voice. All those fun things. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. We are at the second to last episode of the letter B. Uh, These last two are going to be a bit on the longer side just because uh, that's how it's sort of laying out on the page. Didn't make sense to turn this into three or four episodes. Uh, So let's get into it. Uh, The first word is by, B-Y, first form. We're at the top of page 170. Uh, Okay, Uh, let's see. This is a preposition. There's a bunch of definitions. Uh, from before the 12th century. One, in proximity to. Synonym is near, as in standing by the window. 2A, through or through the medium of. 
synonym is via, V-I-A, as in enter by the door, or enter via, enter via the door. Do you say via or via? Hmm, I don't know which one I say. I think I said via, but sometimes do I say via? I don't know. Maybe. What do you say? I think via sounds much more fancy than just by. Uh, okay, to be in the direction of. Synonym is toward or to- toward. I cannot say this word. Toward. To- toward. Uh, as in north by east. To see into the vicinity of and beyond. Synonym is past. As in went right by him. 3A. During the course of. As in studied by night. 3B, not later than, as in by 2 p.m. So you got to do this thing by 2 p.m., so not later than that. You got to do it by that time, before that time. 4A, through the agency or instrumentality of, as in by force. 4B, born or begot of, like born born from, you came from. Uh, 4C, sired or born by. Number five, with the witness or sanction of, as in, swear by all that is holy. 6a, in conformity with, as in, acted by the rules. 6b, synonym is according to, as in, called her by name. Called her according to name? Called her by name? Hmm, I don't know. That's not connecting uh, called her by name, called her according to name? I don't know. Okay, moving on to 7A, on behalf of, as in, did right by his children. Good for him. 7B, with respect to, as in, a lawyer by profession. 8A, in or to the amount or extent of, as in, win by a nose. 8B is chiefly Scottish, in comparison with, synonym is beside. Nine is used as a function word to indicate successive units or increments. So there's no actual definition for this one. Uh, used as a function word to indicate successive units or increments, as in little by little, also as in walk two by two. It's a very versatile word. And number 10, also, um, there's also an 11. Number 10 also has no definition, and it says it is used as a function word in multiplication, in division, and in measurements, uh, as in divide A by B, also as in multiply 10 by 4, also as in, again, a room 15 feet by 20 feet. And then you multiply that together to get the area. And number 11, in the, the opinion of... Also, from the point of view of, as in, okay by me. That definition was okay by me. We have a couple phrases, or it's the similar phrase, by the by, and then also by the by, but the second by is B-Y-E, and this one we just have the number two definition for the word incidentally. By the by, I wonder why you can spell it both ways. Incidentally, we are going to move on to the second form of by adverb from before the 12th century. 1A, close at hand, synonym is near. 1B, at or to another's home, Syn- uh, as in stop by. 2, synonym is past, as in saw him go by. Maybe that, that he saw the people go by him from the example from earlier, which was something like went right by him. Uh, let's see. Number three, synonyms are aside and away. Now we have the third form of by. It could also be spelled B-Y-E. Adjective from the 14th century. One, being off the main route. Synonym is side. And then number two, synonym is incidental. Fourth form of by could also be spelled B-Y-E. Noun from 1867. Something of secondary importance, a side issue. And then the last form of by also again could be spelled B-Y-E, interjection from 1709, used to express farewell, often used with following the word now. Uh, By for now, uh, it just says it's short for the word goodbye. Uh, Now we have by and by, three words with hyphens, we are still, um, it's still B-Y, 
This is a noun from 1591, a future time or occasion. Next is by and by again, but there are no hyphens. It's very confusing if you're just hearing it and you're not seeing it. This is an adverb from 1526. Synonyms are before long and soon. Before long, we will be at the end of the letter B. By and by, it will be here. Next is by and large adverb. No, yes, adverb from 1706. On the whole or in general. Uh, by and large, you know, this, this thing. But this one um, is very interesting because Pixar very cleverly use this as the name of the big corporation in the movie Wally. I don't know if they use it in any other other movies. I feel like they did, but I can't think of examples right now. Um, but yes, uh, there's this giant corporation that owned everything and had ads on everything. And they called they called it by and large, but instead of B-Y, it was B-U-Y. So like you're buying things, you're purchasing things. Um, and it's also just, you know, it's this huge building, you know, think of like, um, like a Walmart or a, or Costco, but like on a whole other level, uh, you know, it's just extremely huge. And again, they like own everything. Uh, and so it's just, it was just a very clever name, uh, that I always enjoyed that, that little sort of joke that whatever that is. Um, but I am very, it's, it's very frustrating that there's this one company that pretty much owns everything and that's bad. Okay. Next we have by blow, B Y hyphen the word blow noun from 1592. One, an indirect blow Two, an illegitimate child. Well, that's, they call that a by blow. That's very strange. Next we have by catch. Noun from 1976, the portion of a commercial fishing catch that consists of marine animals caught unintentionally. Um, yeah, there. I've been hearing this word a lot because, uh, say, there are fishermen, fisher people trying to catch one animal and then a whole bunch of other animals get caught that they don't want to. Sometimes they get thrown back. Sometimes, unfortunately, they die. I mean, unfortunately, all these animals that they're catching are dying. Um, but there are scientists, there are people who are working on making things, making it better so that they're only catching what they mean to catch. And I very much hope that they're doing this sustainably. Uh, you know, I'd rather them not do it at all. But as long as it's done sustainably, you know, to keep the, uh, the ecology, that, um, that habitat the same consistently, I think that's good. And then, yeah, obviously you don't want to be catching the other things that you don't mean to catch. Uh, so yeah, they're they're doing good work in that area. Wait, we got a ways to go. All right, next we have the word by b y e. I really wish this was the last word of the bees, but unfortunately, it is not. It would be a great one to end on. This is a noun from 1883. The position of a participant in a tournament. Well, this isn't the one that I was thinking of, but anyway. Uh, the position of a participant in a tournament who advances to the next round without playing. And uh, next we have bye-bye, B-Y-E hyphen B-Y-E. I guess you could also just spell it B-Y. First form interjection from circa 1736. It is used to express farewell. Um, and they say it's baby talk. Uh, you know, of the, the word goodbye. Second form of bye-bye. Uh, adverb from 1917, out especially for a walk or ride. And this is used with the, the verb go. Go bye-bye. I got to go bye-bye. Uh, now we have the third form of bye-bye. There's four forms of bye-bye. Who knew that? Uh, this is a noun from 1867. Synonyms are bed and sleep, as in lie down and go to bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, uh, that is a quote from Yud Rudyard, Rudyard Kipling. I think he's the guy who wrote uh, The Jungle Book. Yeah, I think it was The Jungle Book. Um, so lie down and go to bye-bye. I mean, can't you just say go to bed, go to bye-bye? Who else has ever used this that way? Uh, okay, fourth form of bye-bye. <laughs> it sounds so silly now. I mean, it always did. Adverb from 1920, to bed or sleep. And it is used with the verb go. Go bye-bye. All right. Uh, next, we have by-election. 
B-Y hyphen the word election could also again be spelled B-Y-E. Noun from 1870, a special election held between regular elections in order to fill a vacancy. By election. I wonder why they call it by election. Uh, next we have, hmm, Belarusian. Belarusian. I think that's it. Uh, B Y E L O, and then the word Russian, and there's a capital B. This is a noun from uh, 1944, and we just have the synonym Belarusian or Belarusian. Uh, so it's just a different spelling of that. Belarusian or Belarusian. Next, we have biform, B Y hyphen F O R M, noun from 1887 a parallel and sometimes less important form of a word, stem, or formative element by a, or in a given language or dialect. Next is bygone, one word, adjective from the 15th century, and it just says gone by. Synonym is past. So, uh, you know, when a thing is gone by, it's, it's bygone. Uh, as in bygone days, especially the synonym outmoded, as in bygone styles and then bygone is also a noun next we have bylaw uh, could also be spelled b-y-e law noun from the 14th century one a rule adopted by an organization chiefly for the government on its members and the regulation of its affairs number two a local ordinance um, and then uh, let's see any etymology that's interesting it is from the Old Norse word byr, B-Y-R, which means town, and then a lag or log, which means law. So it's like the law of a town. And then our last word, two forms of it are byline, B-Y-L-I-N-E. First form, noun from 1916. One, a secondary line. Synonym is sideline. Two, a line at the beginning of a news story, magazine article, or book giving the writer's name. And then the, la- the last word, second form of byline, is a transitive verb from 1938, to write under a byline. And an example is an article, to write an article under a byline. And byliner is a noun. So we had Bye, 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 and bye, bye, and bye, bye, and large, bye, blow, bye, catch, bye, 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 by election, by low Russian, by form, by gone, by law, by line, by line. Uh, was so there was one. I'm you know, I'll just pick, I don't know, let me look again. Um, I could probably find a better one, but I'm just gonna pick bye bye as the word of the episode because. Bye-bye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Yes, this day has arrived. We are at the very end of the bees. We are on the last section of the bees. So it is a big, big celebration. There might be something at the end that happens. Uh, Okay, so I have my wife here. Hello, word nerds. Uh, She, well, we'll see if she feels like saying something, she'll say something. Otherwise, it's just going to be me. Uh, so today I think is, have I done my math correct? Yes. I think today is December 11th, 2020. What an auspicious day. The end of the bees. No, it's not. It's December 10th. I'm dumb. Okay. The first word is by name, B Y N A M E noun from the 14th century. One, a secondary name. Number two synonym is nickname. I've never heard of by name before. What's my by name? No idea. What's, what's your by name? I don't know. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, I've never really had a nickname. All right, next is BYO, all caps, abbreviation for bring your own. And what is the, the phrase that we almost always see? It is the next word, which is BYOB, abbreviation for bring your own booze. That's one of them. Also, bring your own beer. Also, bring your own bottle. So many different options for that one. Uh, And then we know we change it up. If you want to say bring your own food, it's B-Y-O-F, but that sounds weird. Okay, next is bypass. First form, noun from 1848. One, a passage to one side, especially 
a deflected route, usually around a town. Uh, yeah, lots of highways have bypasses. 2A, a channel carrying a fluid around a part and back to the main stream. 2B1, the synonym is the 1B definition for the word shunt, S-H-U-N-T. And then 2B2 is the 1C definition for the word shunt. And then also a surgical procedure for the establishment of a shunt, as in have a coronary bypass. And fun fact, I actually have started recording the C's and there is a word coming up in a couple episodes that is very much related to this one. Uh, You never want to get bypass surgery, so make sure that you eat healthy and exercise. Next is the second form of bypass. It is a transitive verb from 1736, 1A, to avoid by means of a bypass, as in bypass a congested area. 1B, to cause to follow a bypass. 2A, to neglect or ignore, usually intentionally. 2B, synonym is circumvent, as in attempting to bypass the law. Don't attempt that. That's just dumb. Next is by past, P-A-S-T, adjective from the 15th century, and the synonym is bygone. By the way, if this sounds a little bit different, that's because we are sitting in our dining room where it is much more echoey. Usually, I'm just sitting on my bed. Okay, next is by path, P-A-T-H, noun from the 14th century, and the synonym is byway which uh, we must be getting to yet later this episode. Uh, Next is by play, noun from 1812. Action engaged in in on the side while the main action proceeds as during a dramatic production. So there's during a play and there's a bunch of stuff happening, but then there's some other stuff happening off to the side and you can call that the by play. Uh, that's a very interesting thing. Okay, next is by product. By hyphen product, noun from 1857. One, something produced in a usually industrial or biological process in addition to the principal product. Two, a secondary and sometimes unexpected or unintended result. The by- byproduct of this podcast is that I'm learning lots of good stuff, and I hope you are too. Sharon, are you learning stuff? Nope. <laughs> That's what I thought. Next is buyer, B-Y-R-E, noun from before the 12th century. It is chiefly British, and it just means a cow barn. Uh, this is akin to the, let's see, old English boer, which means dwelling, and there's more at the word bower or bower. Uh, so the cow barn is a buyer. Next is by road. Like by and then road, the street road, noun from 1665. The synonym is byway. Next is bisonosis, B Y S S I N O S I S, noun from 1881. An occupational respiratory disease associated with inhalation of cotton, flax, or hemp dust and characterized initially by chest tightness shortness of breath, and cough, and eventually by irreversible lung disease. Sharon, the nurse, probably knows a little bit about something, a little bit something about this, don't you? Not at all. (laughs) Not common up here in the Midwest. Well, I should say in the Chicago area, since we don't have a lot of farms up here, it's not something that I've dealt with. Uh, But do you know what is happening in, uh, in the lungs in bisonosis? I do not. I've never heard the term. I'm assuming it's, uh, where's the word? Right here. Respiratory disease associated with inhalation of a bunch of stuff. I'm sure it's probably similar to someone breathing in asbestos or something like that, or it, uh, the little fibers destroy the lungs. Maybe, I don't know, cu- cuts them up a little bit. Um, yeah, not heard of it. Or maybe get stuck in there. I think I've heard of it. Um, but yeah, if you're working with stuff like that, uh, make sure that you wear um, lots of protection because you don't want to breathe that bad stuff in. Probably uh, common in rural areas where there's a lot of farms. Yes. Uh, so this is from the Latin word bisonus, which is of fine linen. 
uh, and that's good for that. So next we have Bissus, B-Y-S-S-U-S, noun from the 14th century. One, a fine, probably linen cloth of ancient times. This is related to bisinosis. Uh, number two, a tuft of long, tough filaments by which some bivalve mollusks, as mussels, adhere to a surface. And the etymology, let's see, this is from the Greek word bisos, which means flax, um, from the Hebrew bus, which means linen cloth. And that's good for that. Next is bystander, noun from 1584. One present, but not taking part in a situation or event. Also a chance spectator. Usually we hear this when there's an accident or something and there's just a bunch of bystanders watching. Uh, yep. Next is by street, noun from 1672, a street off a main thoroughfare. Uh, next is bite, B-Y-T-E, noun from 1962, a unit of computer information or storage data storage capacity that consists of a group of eight bits and that is used especially to represent an alpha, alphanumeric character and then compare to the 2C definition for the word word. Uh, so there's, there's uh, bits and then eight bits make up a byte and then I think it's a thousand bytes make up a megabyte and then et cetera, et cetera. Next is byway, noun from the 14th century. One, a little traveled side road, a side road that is not traveled upon much. Two, a secondary or little known aspect or field, as in meandering more and more in the fascinating byways of learning. And that is from the Times Literary Supplement. Uh, yep, it's just uh, the byways. Next is byword, noun from before the 12th century. One, a proverbial saying, synonym is proverb. To A, one that personifies a type. To B, one that is noteworthy or notorious. Three, synonym is epithet. Four, a frequently used word or phrase. Next, we have by your leave, three words with hyphens, noun from 1894, a request for permission, as in imposed without so much as a by your leave. And that is a quote from J.L. Granetstein. Granetstein. Okay, next is Byzantine, first form, capital B Y Z A N T I N E. Uh, this is an adjective from 1651, one of relating to or characteristic of the ancient city of Byzantium, two of relating to or having the characteristics of a style of architecture developed by the Byzantine Empire, especially in the 5th and 6th centuries, featuring the dome carried on pendentives over a square and incrustation with marble veneering and with colored mosaics on grounds of gold. That was the longest definition I've had in a while. I was not prepared for that. Uh, number three, of or relating to the churches using a traditional Greek rite and subject to Eastern, Eastern canon law. Number four is often not capitalized. So we have 4A, of relating to or characterized by a de devious and usually surreptitious manner of operation, as in a Byzantine power struggle. 4B, intricately involved, synonym is labyrinthine, labyrinthine, as in rules of Byzantine complexity. Um, maybe we'll find a picture of sort of this, this Byzantine empire style with the domes. And now we have the second form of Byzantine, noun from 1651, a native or inhabitant of Byzantium. And then finally, our very, very last word for the bees is Byzantinist, capital B-Y-Z-A-N-T-I-N-I-S-T, -I -I noun from 1892. Sharon, you're going to read this one. A student of Byzantine culture. Boom, nailed it. All right, so we had by name, BYO, BYOB, bypass, bypassed, bypath, by path, by play, byproduct, buyer, by road, 
bisonosis, bisis, bystander, by street, bite, byway, byword, by your leave, Byzantine, and Byzantinist. Sharon, what is your word of the episode? I'm going to choose B Y O B. <laughs> yeah, I figured you would. Um, that is going to be the word of the episode. Those were all the words. And I did BYOB. Would you like to do the honors and open that bottle to celebrate the end of the bees? Yeah, we, we BYOB'd this. Uh, we have a, uh, following our pattern, which is now a pattern because there's two, we have a brute, a sparkling wine, which is a brute, which obviously you can go back and listen and learn what a brute is. Uh, but we're going to pop this bottle and have a little bit to celebrate the end of the bees. Heyo! Good thing it's not overflowing. Is there a B word that means cheers? Uh, is there a B word that means cheers? I don't know. We'll just say beers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it's on the dry side. I'm not like a big fan of those things, but um, uh, fun fun fact, don't uh, breathe in when you're putting something bubbly up to your face because you're just going to breathe in all the bubbles, and that happens to me all the time. So thank you very much for listening to this. Uh, we have finished two letters out of the whole alphabet. Starting tomorrow, you will start to hear me talk about the C's, which is going to be a long one. Buckle in. All right. You are great. Thank you very much. Uh, please go rate and review and share and subscribe and send me messages and send me emails if you want and become a patron if you so like. Thank you very much. And this has been Spencer and Sharon dispensing information. Goodbye. Blah.